Happy Easter family. He has risen. Well, welcome to New Life Church Hampton Easter service. Today, after this service at 11.30 a.m., we'll all come together on Zoom and we'll take communion as a family. It's so easy to join. We've sent out an email. Just click on the email and the email link and you will come into the uh, meeting and you should see the whole family on Zoom. If you want to remain anonymous, that's fine. Switch off your video at the bottom of the screen whilst you're in the waiting room or just put a bit of sticky tape over the camera and that'll keep your face from being videoed. Now Easter is a time of celebration. Often people make more about Christmas, more about giving and presents and everything, but actually, the birth of Christ, important as it is, Easter is far, far more important. Because if Jesus didn't die for us and hadn't rose again, then we would still be under the law and we would still be trying to please God. But through his death, we now have unity with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is, through it is through faith and grace we come into God's presence. So let's celebrate with our first song today to get us in that festival mood. He is risen by Elevation Worship.
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for our families, our extended family. Help us to learn something about you at this time that we can put in practice during the week. Amen. The world right now is looking for a saviour like never before. Doctors and nurses can extend life, but only Jesus can give life now and forever. The good news is that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. He is the world's saviour. And in him we have hope for the future. He is the only one who can truly save everyone. I often hear people blame God. Why has he not stopped this virus? People all over the world are fasting and praying. In some African countries, the people are faced with a two great dilemmas. Do they go out and risk catching the virus or do they not go out and starve? Which one of those two evils do they take? These are not nice choices for anyone to make. But why blame God? When people don't get their own way, they tend to blame someone. It can be God. It can be their pastor. But no one blames me, thank God. Or even their family. But blame never changes anything. Blame avoids the truth and taking responsibilities for that. Responsibilities that are required to make a change. It's easier to blame rather than change. The motive behind blame is always fear. A fear of not getting your own way. Jesus set before Pilate, blamed and accused of things he had never said or had never done. The Pharisees were afraid of people following him. And if people followed him, they would lose their power. They would lose their status. They would lose their control. Pilate, on the other hand, was in a position of authority to make sure that he kept everything in order. If the Jews started to riot... He could lose his job as Roman prefect over Judea. Listen to this from Matthew 27, 24. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead of an uproar, instead an uproar was starting, he took water, he washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. You see, it's easier to blame than change. Notice he washed his hands. Good virus practice. But the blame still remains. During this time of lockdown, it can be easy to blame somebody. The loss of freedom and boredom can lead to family disputes and disagreements. The pointing finger in the blame game can all too easily be done. Words spoken in anger based on fear using that you word. It's easier to blame than change. In Luke 12, 13 to 14, Jesus was asked to sort out a disagreement over money, over an inheritance. They wanted God to sort out this disagreement. 
Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. You see, the root cause here, I know it was greed, but greed was based on fear. The fear of inheritance not being shared equally. My brother might have more than me. I might have less. The person, the brothers, wanted Jesus to judge. Recently, we've all experienced the effects of panic buying in supermarkets. It's all caused by fear of not having enough. When people operate out of fear, their worlds become very, very small. Here Jesus points them away from their fear towards God. God is greater than anything you are facing right now. When we look to the source of love, perfect love casts out all fear. Why not make, why not this Easter take an example from Mary Magdalene? She suffered the loss of her Messiah and Saviour. Rather than blame, she went to the tomb to give a final devotion of love. Mary and Mary and Salome went with her. She had every reason to be angry. She could have been angry with the Jews for what they'd done, angry with Pontius Pilate for what he said and didn't protect Jesus, angry even with the father for letting his son die. But she chose not to blame, but to change. She'd experienced the love of Jesus. Now facing his death, something she could not possibly fully understand, much like what we're facing today. We don't fully understand why everything is happening, but we do put our trust in the Lord's love. At Easter, people reflect and look back. Thoughts of perhaps, maybe God is judging mankind. No, God has done his judgment on Jesus. If you know Jesus, God is now your friend. He is working with you. In him, he fills us with love and an unexpressible joy. Jesus never came to judge people. He came to save people. And you know, we're called, don't judge people. Love people, save people. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life is better than anything. Mary, in her past, had been possessed by seven demons. Can you imagine the torment and the stuff she must have been doing to get possessed by seven demons? But now, having been set free, she was no longer letting her past affect her future. Mary, mother of James and Salome, accepted her just as she was. A friend of Jesus. Wanting to serve her Lord to the very end. Many people, when they blame God, miss What's really happening? For some, this lockdown, this lockdown will be a defining moment in their marriage or their families. When pressure is applied, you have to grow. There's no option. You either grow or you go. So grow. Change. 
The way you grow is through operating in love. Don't judge. Use this time to grow in love towards one another. When people look back, and I talk to very old people, I mean, I'm quite young, so old people are, are quite a lot older, you know? And they talk about World War II. They have fond memories as they've forgotten about the fear, but remember the love, the fellowship and the community all working together at that time. I once remember having a dinner with a multimillionaire and his wife. She was complaining and blaming her husband that he never spoiled her. And the conversation went something like this. Don't you remember, darling, when I surprised you and took you to Saint-Tropez? She replied, hmm, that was boring. But what about that Caribbean cruise, darling? That was boring too. Well, that safari I surprised you with in South Africa, now that was fun. He said with sadness in his eyes. It was okay, she replied. I asked them then, when was the happiest time in your marriage? They both agreed it's when they bought their first house. They were poor. They couldn't afford anything. In fact, all they could afford to, for a table was a box where they ate their meals off and sat on the floor. It is often the hard times in life when families, friends and people are forged together. Times like this, forgetting their pasts, Forgetting the differences that divide people, they come together as one. This time of lockdown could become your defining moment, part of your family's future of love, as you put the blame and start to change by working together in love. In Matthew, Jesus was talking uh, to the crowds and he said in Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you are yoked with Jesus, everything becomes a little easier. The things that seem impossible, somehow, now become possible. As we embrace his love this Easter, taking the blame away and starting to change, everything happens. Mary, upset and confused, faced a fear, the fear of change, the fear of rejection. She ran to the tomb to perform that last act of love for her, for her God, her Messiah. Thoughts going through her head as she was running to the tomb. The stone could be blocking the, the way, like you see behind me. Would the stone be rolled away? Would the guards help? Because we're not strong enough to move the stone. That stone was the stone, the stumbling block of entering into the tomb. Would the guards help? And when she got there, the tomb, the stone was rolled away. And there was an angel there who told her that Jesus has risen. Let's pick up the story from Matthew 28, 8. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy. They ran to tell the disciples. They didn't understand 
That's what made them afraid. They didn't understand what had happened. Jesus was not there. They'd seen an angel. But they were filled with joy on the inside. When you do the right thing and you make peace in a relationship, the outcome may seem uncertain at first. But it's that joy. It's that joy that carries you through. And it gives you strength. It gives you strength to change. This Easter, take a moment to reflect on the joy the Lord has given you. The stone that could not be moved has been rolled away. The captive set free. With God, all things become possible. But without Jesus, the tomb becomes your tomb. And there is no joy, only darkness, as a stone is rolled across the entrance, blocking all light coming in. Never has there been a better time than now to ask Jesus into your heart. I remember in my darkest hour, I prayed this prayer. Nearly 30, over 30 years ago, I prayed this prayer from my heart and if you're watching this and you've never ever asked Jesus in your heart and you've never had that stone rolled away and letting his light his love come into your life this is your time this is your moment and it goes like this so just say this after me but don't pray it from your head pray it from your heart Lord Jesus I ask you into my life. I believe you died for me on the cross and on the third day you rose again. And from this day forth I am forgiven, you are my Lord and I will be with you in paradise when I die. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, I'd just like you to go onto our website, send me an email or give us a call on the telephone number there. This Easter, don't blame, but change. With Jesus, the stone is rolled away. His light comes into the tomb. Today is a celebration of what he is doing, and what he's done, and what he will do. The stone is rolled away. Amen. Have an incredible Easter. Share the joy of Jesus with someone. And do join us at 11.30. Make sure you have your communion. And in each one of us, um, as we come up, we'll take communion on Zoom. And you'll see them come up on the screen. They will say, this is the bread, this is the blood. And each person will take it individually or as a family and we will all collectively, over a period of five or ten minutes, have taken communion together this Easter. So we'll close uh, with a song. But before we close, I just want to pray for you all who are watching. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that that pointing finger will be removed. That you word will be destroyed. And be replaced with we. The you will go as well to an I. I take responsibility. I am sorry. And that blame of you did this, you didn't do that, will vanish. And I release in Jesus' name his love into your families, into your life. This Easter and this week. Amen.
is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet. Now at His feet we bow. Shines for all to see. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise.
happy, blame-free, changed Easter. Amen.